And we're live! Hello, everybody. It is Tuesday, June 26th, 2018. I'm Jake Baldino. We're talking about video game stuff today. It's a slow week. Yes, a little bit. very but slow. we're going to have fun regardless. I am joined, as always, by... And are you busy? You got something going yeah. on? <laughs> I need to get back to a bench before we... Oh, now I'm just in those menus. I fucked up. Just put it to sleep! Did, no, did no, you bring no, enough no. for the class? <laughs> Andrew, what are you playing? Yeah, what are you playing? Hollow Knight. We're joined by Andrew Gebbia. Not only are we joined by Andrew Gebbia, but behind on the board, <coughs> Good. doing all the technical stuff, is Tom Johnson. What's hey, I'm not playing Hollow Knight right now. I would hope not. That would be a goddamn disaster. I mean, I could boot it up on this PC. It is on here. If you're feeling nasty. Uh, so, how you guys doing? Good. How's things? Good. How are you feeling? Good. Ty, we, we ate a whole bunch of pizza at Pizza Rev. Yeah. Is Pizza Rev a national thing? Or I, it... it's, I think it's a national chain. It's okay. owned by Chipotle, I believe. Yeah. Oh, okay. I think, I don't know, I, I, aren't they supposed to be popping? They're saying thing? sound is off, but it shouldn't be. Uh, off? Like, off, off? Or... Hold on, this is going to be annoying, but... I, f- I hear oh, us. Okay. It's probably me who sounds really quiet. I hear us fine. Yeah. I can never get my mic right. It's probably a sound issue or something. I don't care. We'll fix it in post. Good. Uh, Positive Vibes of User does say Pizza Rev is great. Okay. It's that's really good. good. Um, I like it a lot. It's... Acceptable pizza? It's not. It's good for chain pizza. It's, a, You'd, but it's the same thing as like, water all over your microwave. Okay, it's not real pizza. <laughs> it's not real pizza, but it's no. like well, not Domino's. If you're craving pizza, though, you don't go to Pizza Rev. You don't go but, to Domino's either. You go to a pizza place. De- like, it's for different. real, though, it's I, different types Domino's of pizza. is one of my favorite pizzas. Yeah. But you complain that's, about that's, it every day. That's fine. Well, it's because I have an exceptionally bad Domino's. So the thing I don't like about Pizza Rev and this is like a stupid, <laughs> petty thing. Like, I'm, I'm so excited <laughs> to hear this. You seem so excited. No, I'm, I'm going to Instagram um, you. So it, I just don't like having choices. I don't like being like, like deciding what I want to eat. It's the same thing with Subway. It's the same thing with Chipotle where you walk in and there's a you bunch of You want a curated menu. Well, here's the problem. They need to make it so all the ingredients, no matter what they are, work good together. So my problem is that, like, I don't know what to pick, so I'll make a stupid pizza <laughs> that isn't good because I don't... What? Are you crazy? <laughs> so, well, what was your stupid pizza that you got today? My pizza came out good, but it was because I had to play it super low to the table. I had to play it conservative to not mess it up. I just did uh, cheese, s- sauce, uh, Italian sausage. You put onions or What else do you move? do that's crazy? Onions, what else do you put on a... But, but what and, would you have done that's crazy? Well, you can fuck it up because pizza's different. Like, you can't just have... Uh, mozzarella cheese, and then they, you could also have cheddar if you wanted. But <laughs> yeah, they have a that? bucket of cheddar who's gonna there get, Who's going to get tomato sauce and cheddar <laughs> and then uh, The guy two it. in front of us that got the mobile order. Yeah. Yeah. That's who does that. I don't want to have the freedom to mess that up because, see, look, see, Finel Ski makes sense. Aren't you guys from New York? Get real pizza. He's absolutely right. No, most of the time we do, but every once in a while we like Actually, an alternative. Most of the time I won't because, and here's why. Is, is I valid. will drive past two to three better real pizza places and get Domino's because I can order that online and don't have to talk to a person. Yeah, I like that. But at least at a pizza place, you walk up and you say, give me pizza. And they say, okay. When you call them on the phone, they're rude as hell. <laughs> and I don't like that. And that's my anxiety. So anyway, basically what I'm saying is I don't like choices. Same thing with Subway. You go to Subway. Someone else was talking about this on a podcast recently. And they made a really good point. You go to Subway, right? You look at the thing, and there's like, oh, look at that sick new tomato <laughs> slammer sandwich, whatever the fuck. I, uh, tomato I, I, I slammer. I, I think I know where you're going with this, and I'm really hoping so, because I have a great counterpoint you know exactly, to this. Okay, turkey and tomato slammer, right? You walk up, you say, can I have that? And they're like, what bread do you want it on? And then you say, okay, how about Italian bread? And then they say, okay, what do you want on it? And you're like, just make me that. Just give me that thing on the board. I went to the subway by my house, by the train station, which is a bad subway to begin with. Yeah, that subway sucks. Uh, and I went... <laughs> The hey, can I have, can I have your signature sandwich? Can I have the Subway Club, the one that has your name in it? And the guy looks at me and goes, okay, what's in that? See, and I'm you like, you're the sandwich to... artist, not yeah. me. <laughs> sandwich <laughs> artist. You're the sandwich artist. He screamed as he was carted <laughs> off to jail. Um, <laughs> what about like a deli? When you go to a deli. Uh, what about it? How do you order your sandwich? Uh, do you normally. only order like the pre-made ones? Or you not say, can I get roast uh, beef with American cheese, mayonnaise, lettuce, tomato? A deli's different because I feel Why like is it different? Because I've had that figured out. Delis are designed... It's the same thing. From the beginning, when God made a deli, or whatever you have in your uh, neck of the country, um, a quick check, or whatever the fuck. A sheets. A, a sheets, wawa. A uh, sandwich store. <laughs> um, 
you so God made it so that delis from the beginning. You know all the things you're working with. Pizza and and no, heroes I'm, specifically. I'm, yeah, I'm, no, I'm, I'm back on Subway. I want to know what yeah. sets a deli and Subway so far apart in terms of ordering your food. Okay, well, because Subway. If anything, it's easier because it's assembly line and it's laid out in front of you. You don't have to go. Do you have onions? You go. Oh look, they have onions. Uh, the problem with Subway is that. It's not real meat. You can't trust that meat. No, 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 no. But you're still no. you're, you're completely you're completely not answering my question. Okay, hit me. What <laughs> is me. what is what is different from ordering a sandwich at Subway and ordering a sandwich at a deli in terms of let me get this with this? Because and this the employees this. at the deli okay. have a different kind of sadness in their eyes. Yeah. No. So I okay. So I'm gonna tell you something. I don't want to like scare you, but the sandwiches at Subway are not fucking sandwiches. They don't constitute a sandwiches. Hampton you're Reeves still missing. Are, no, <laughs> no, no not, you're not answering the question. Uh, Mac guy 28 says he used to work at Quick Check and they have touch screen ordering. Yes, they do, and it fucking owns bones. That's it's dope. so good. Um, you you gotta get like B roll for while we're talking about this. You just run <laughs> Arby's and, and Subway commercials. Um, fuck you was the conclusion. No, I still, I still delis don't. Are I still... Delis are better than Subways because oh, delis, what, uh, you said, no, 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 no. I'm not. To, I would, because I would, delis, you, you know what the ingredients are. You know what they do with one another. Subway's a little different. Do you? Like, because Andrew got a fucking wrap from a deli that had a literal hamburger in it. Yeah. And, and eggs. But like, <laughs> yeah, and Subway, eggs. it's like there's turkey. The turkey at Subway doesn't taste like real turkey. The cheese is not real no, cheese. No, I know. You're, a slice I'm of not talking about the quality yeah. of the sandwich. I'm no, talking I'm saying it throws about... off my choices. It's different to think about than if you go, yeah, Owns let me bones. get a let me Does get a roast beef in Swiss with uh, horseradish or mayo and lettuce, tomato, onion. Because you know what the lettuce, tomato, onion is going to be like at a deli. You know, is the a lettuce, tomato, onion that different at a Subway? It is. It is. It is. I don't it, think it's that different. It is absolutely one thousand percent different. Think it's that Even the onions. I'll Have give you, ever you the had meats. Onions from Subway. They stay with you for seven years. <laughs> <laughs> for some reason. Okay. I had uh, my do. roommate in college would always get a tuna sub from Subway. That's gross, <laughs> dude. I used to know a vegetarian person that used to get the veggie patties. You ever see those veggie patties? Yeah. They, they look not happy. All and right, like, guys, and that's when I was vegetarian, so I would just get all the vegetables. I'm like, I, I'm not fucking with the veggie patty. Just right. give me all the vegetables. All right, guys, I would, I, if you guys want to have a separate food podcast, I am down for that. Uh, but we are about 10 minutes into this episode, <laughs> the 60-minute episode, and we've only talked about food. Uh, so we should probably move on. All right, so first things first. Andrew, what are you playing? What are you playing right now? What are you doing? Uh, well, I started, Hol- I started Hollow Knight. Yeah, you, just, uh, you couldn't stop. Tell Apparently. us about Hollow Knight, Andrew. What's up? Tell us about Hollow Knight. Oh, you play this little cute bug? Yeah, you do. You got a little nail and you hit shit. And they explode into rocks. You collect those rocks. and They're called geos. You hand them in and you get stuff. That's probably... I don't even want to... I mean, I'm playing the game right now, but now I don't want to play it. The way you described it is horrible. That's what it is. No, it, it, it's, it's a, it's a uh, Metroidvania um, that came out, I think, last year or two years ago on PC. And it got a surprise announcement, a surprise release on... Uh, on Nintendo Switch at E3, not really a surprise release. We knew it was coming, but we didn't, but we did. Excuse me, we didn't know the date. Um, but now it's out, and it's like Stardew, where when it came out, like everyone's playing it, and it's like another one of those games where it seems like everyone with a Switch, whether they did or did not play Hollow Knight previously, is like they're currently playing it, like on Switch. That's, That's all really cool. we did today at work. We just played this. Oh uh, no, you guys played some Mario Tennis too, yeah, because we'll you guys we'll have get, no we'll self-control. Uh, so Hollow Knight. Do you are you finding yourself like sufficiently challenged? Because it it takes Dark Souls elements, but it's not a Dark Souls game. No, a lot of people yeah. throw Dark Souls around. It, the one thing it does take from it is it still does not give a fuck about you. Yeah, it's like yeah. an extra hard Metroidvania. I think is what yeah. I'd say. I mean, there there are Souls like tendencies, like for sure, like mm-hmm. in the sense of like I've only fought a few bosses, but like every boss is different and does have like a different like way to beat them. Each boss is like pretty memorable. Um, there's also like the whole collecting geo thing, and when you die, you'll lose them. You have to go it's back like and collect losing your them. Money. Like there's stuff like that, and then it also takes the difficulty of like a a, a, a souls like game, and also like mixes that into the already hard genre that is Metroidvanias. Yeah. So um, I don't I don't think Souls like needs to be a game that plays like Neo or The Surge. Like it doesn't need to play exactly like a Dark Souls game to be a Souls like game. Take, I think take cues. Yeah, think exactly. Because I mean, if you look at it, which footage is running right now, it does not look like a Dark Souls game, a Bloodborne game. It doesn't look like anything like those. But no. well, then let me ask you a question. Uh, and if that's the case, 
I get that many charms. Do you think? Uh, do you think it needs to be a? a do, do you think Souls like can be a genre? If you're saying a game doesn't need to be just like dark, because like I don't know. I only it's, think of it like if it's yeah. like it. Neo is in the genre that is a Dark Souls game. Well, technically, they're they're they're, they're both action adventure games. Okay. I think so. Sub, sub yeah. genre. Well, it's the same thing with like rogue like oh, and rogue light, yeah. where like the new Prey DLC has rogue elements, mm -hmm. but it's not a rogue like or rogue light. It's not a rogue legacy. Yeah. So like I think it's the same thing with like music, like how there's hardcore, post hardcore, hardcore punk, punk. Like there's you know like just punk and hardcore have so many different like thrash, thrash metal, metal, death metal, black metal. Like it's just so many different like little avenues for one thing where it's all under the same same umbrella as metal or if you want to even get even broader rock music like it's just ah I rock to, music I need to, yeah, I need to get know. spicy I need to get spicy back on, on uh, Salad Bear in the comments not him specifically but this argument he says just because a game is hard doesn't make it like Dark Souls also no. and yes absolutely yeah. but I think people automatically flip out and go to that when you do happen to take or, or discuss oh this game does Adapt an element from Dark Souls. Yeah, I not I, just the difficulty, actual design elements. But yeah. people yeah. don't actually stop and think I, about I that. Listen they just to go, oh no, you said it's hard and just because it's like Dark Souls doesn't make sense. Yeah. So I, I think when you when you when people pop off about that, I think you need to stop for a second and realize that we're complimenting Dark Souls by saying this game took a design cue. From Dark Souls. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. Sorry. Chill out. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. I was listening to an nice interview. He could chill a little I was listening bit. to the Giant Bomb interview uh, over E3 with the guy who made, like, the guys who made Hollow Knight. And they were literally talking about specific design decisions they made because of Dark Souls. So, I don't think it's a stretch to say that it is Dark Souls inspired. <laughs> yeah, no, it's definitely Dark Souls inspired. Like I said, it doesn't, like I was saying before, it doesn't have to look like a Dark Souls game to... And it's not just because it's hard. No, it's not. I never, you know, that's just a... Uh... You know, Thick Boy One Hundred and One says, "Talk about Ocarina of Time." No, nah, now he's saying, "Which Star Wars <laughs> Legends book should he read?" Uh, the old Thrawn books are really good. Yeah, the Thrawn books are good. Uh, Splinter of the Mind's Eye is still like one of the best, even uh, though that's like the least, the most least canon one now. Those Republic Commando books are really good. Yeah, those are sick. Um, are those canon now? No, those are no, no. I think the only thing that's canon now is the the shows, like the animated shows, the movies. If you want to get not and the Marvel comics. If you want to get not uh, expanded universe. Uh, if you want to get not Legends and do Expanded Universe, um, Lost Stars is really good. It is really good. That's one of the best Star Wars things, like Star Wars side things I've read in a long time. It's also like the young adult Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's like labeled a young adult novel, but it's 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 cool. It's also, really good. that Inferno Squad book isn't terrible. Uh, yeah, I started it and I, I dropped uh, off. I picked up, uh, I'm going on vacation next week, so I picked up the uh, Timothy Zahn uh, Thrawn book. That recently came out. Oh, Salad Bear said the the Bane trilogy. Absolutely. Yes. Like the Dark Absolutely. Bane Dark trilogy. Bane, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah, that's not. Um, if you're trying to say canon, unfortunately, that's not canon anymore. But rip. How fucking cool is Darth Bane? How cool is? Yeah, Darth Bane is awesome. Yeah. Man, I'm just getting all jammed up about Star Wars now. All right, let's move uh, on. Jake, Tom, what have you been playing? I so I've been playing uh, Super Mario Tennis Aces. That's not what it's called, but okay. Mario Tennis Aces. It's uh, nothing super about it. Mario Tennis Aces. Well, then what is... Yeah. Uh, I'm real pissed <laughs> about the game uh, because the start menu is... I heard Mario it's kind of like Dark Souls because it's hard. Can yep. you confirm or deny? Yeah, uh, because it's, it's challenging, it's definitely like, like Dark, Dark Souls. Souls. Yeah. Now we're just going to like it's a soul, uh, trigger people. It's a Souls-like tennis game. Um, so, no, but real thing, it's, uh, it's good. It's really good, but it also has the same thing that uh, I would say like Mario Kart has where uh, it's going to start to lose its luster if you're not playing with people all the time. Okay. If you're a solo type player or you don't want to play online, you're going to have a great time with it. It's great. The gameplay is so good, but then the game doesn't give you too much to keep you around so in the long run. I have only fucked around with you, like yeah. multiplayer match-wise. I still don't actually know how to play the game. Mm -hmm. um, how is that single player campaign? I think it's cool. It's really short. It's like criminally short. I was talking to Hype about it the other day on Discord. Um, it... It, it, it's good because it does a lot. So, like, if, you, if you're watching the videos here, like, some of the map variations are really good, uh, where it'll put you on a pirate ship, and uh, there's a mast in the middle of the court, and you have to, like, what ricochet right now, off yeah. of that, 
or uh, there, there are boss battles that are really cool. Uh, there are <coughs> mirrors that are like, it's almost like you're playing tennis, but uh, on the other, in the middle of the court are like basically portals, like the portal portals from the game floating and like you'll hit a tennis ball on one and it'll right, come out the other one. There are boss fights, like you have to fight the piranha men with the okay. uh, piranha plants with the you get hit them with the tennis balls and stuff it's really fun it's just oh it feels like the ride is over just as it starts okay hey uh, uh so oh. two questions from chat did you just raise your hand well i wanted to get your attention because <laughs> just, we're not on camera right now it's yeah. footage thanks for you know part oh, in the kimono there oh, no, we broke he's done uh, <laughs> he's done that numerous <laughs> like, every, every episode and you always get yes tom <laughs> yeah <laughs> so just do uh, this? two questions from chat uh Keyman Angel 42 says, are you guys going to buy the Fallout 76 Power Armor helmet? We all did. But more yep. importantly, this conversation, Matt Guy 28 asks, how does it look off the dock? Uh, off the dock? Fine. Fine. Yeah. yeah um, I'd say the same quality of like Mario Kart 8, like on and off the dock. Yeah. For me. It seems like the <clears throat> main games, uh, Mario games in particular, have that shit locked down in terms of performance and optimization. That, that yeah. said, it looks really fucking good docked. It does. It's a good-looking yeah, game. Yeah, no, it I, definitely I does. actually said in the before we buy, I felt like I was getting a little penis penisy by saying this, but uh, it's one of the better-looking games on Switch right now because of just how clean, how sharp it is, how colorful it is, uh, especially in single-player. Uh, not even just single-player, but when you're you're doing, like, uh, courts in the jungle or when there's, like, deeper grass, lots of grass, you can really see the textures, and it's, like, pretty crazy for the Switch. Um, generally, it's just a fun-ass game. Yeah. It's still simple. People are really jammed up. Did you guys hear about the tennis rules? No. What? So the game doesn't let you play full rule traditional games of tennis. It's all streamlined, sped up, simplified versions of tennis. Now, me personally, I don't know tennis enough to even notice. If you if you put a gun to my head and told me to tell you how tennis is played, I would just tell you to pull the trigger and kill me right away. Yeah, I yeah. Can't well, yeah. you hit the ball back and forth until one person fucks up. Uh, but... Yeah, so that's the thing. So a lot of people are pretty upset. I've seen a lot of people uh, talking about trying to get refunds and stuff because they came to this game hoping to play full games of tennis. The only time you can uh, is so when they, they went the to a ga- they went to a game mm. about a, a, a mushroom, a dinosaur, an Italian plumber a playing chain tennis to get an actual tennis game. Hmm. Well, hmm. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's Topspin. I mean, they don't make Topspin games anymore, but Topspin was great. And I didn't like tennis as a sport, but I love the hell out of those games. Top 10 for Xbox or Xbox 360, I remember. Um, yeah, overall, it's fun, though. It's cool. It does a little bit of new variations and power moves and stuff. I will say, like, if it's a game you're going to get and play with your casual friends, like, hey, Grandma, fucking pull up a chair and play Mario's hand. There's a bit more going on here. You yeah. have to, like, sit them down and say, listen, Grandma, listen, Uncle Frank. There's, some, there's some power moves, and you got to build up your charge shots. Or you're just gonna blast the other person, like like railroad yeah. someone. Like when you first picked it up and you didn't know how to do the trigger moves, it was like unfair. Yeah, no. I, I, then I had to ask you, how do you play? And then we figured it out. Uh, SK uh, Ski June asks, is there motion control with the Joy Cons? Yes. You didn't like is. it, right? There's a mode specifically called uh, Swing Mode, where you can swing the Joy Con like a real tennis racket, and I didn't think it was very fun at all. Uh, there are different options with the Joy-Con grip itself. Uh, when you do the power trigger moves, you can aim with the gyroscope, uh, which is kind of useful. Uh, but that, that's really it. I didn't like swing mode. The mode itself is pretty simple. It's like just like one-on-one traditional matches. But um, yeah, it wasn't for me. It wasn't that fun. I feel like it didn't register my movements that well. And uh, you know, mm. I, I skipped it. Uh, is Birdo in this game? Uh, Birdo, which I forget which one's Birdo. Birdo's the, like the pink. Yeah, Yoshi the pink Yoshi hole. looking thing with uh, the whole I face. That's one of the characters getting added later on. There are three better. unlockable characters. So the three unlockable characters are interesting. I think this is their way of trying to get the people I was talking about, the people who drop off because they don't have people to play with or they don't like playing online that much. This is their way of kind of keeping them around is if you just at least play the tournament, like this big important tournament that goes live at the end of July and then at the end of August and September. You get the character. Each one, if you just participate, you get that character. Well, they did that with the um, the demo they put out last month. It was like a tournament. Yeah. And if you just played it, you unlocked the oh, that's classic get, Mario skin. That's how, that's how, how I have it already. Oh, yeah. okay, cool. That's how, you, that's how you get that boy in some pants. Yeah, that's what I like. Yeah, that's how you get that's that boy like. in some pants. Um, otherwise, it's a good time. Like I said, if you're if you're if you're jammed up about real tennis rules, be aware of that. But otherwise, it's fun. The single player is short. Uh, make sure it's a game you pick up. You want to play online 
or mm -hmm. have friends to play with. Yeah, I'm I'm <coughs> assuming it's gonna be like Mario Kart, where I still like play it almost like like throughout like like the month, just like pick it up, play a few rounds, put it down, but play it like heavily the week that I start playing it. You know, like that's what I'm expecting. Before we get to what Tom is playing, uh, we do have our first giveaway code. Here we are. This uh, is for what? This is for Xbox One, and this is a code for Bloodstained. What is it called? You played it, I didn't. Oh, Curse of the Moon? Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. Oh, that's really good. I didn't yeah. beat it yet. This is an Xbox One code. Fastest Fingers gets it first. Uh, that's how these giveaways go. Of course, I always say it because we do the show live, and then we upload it to our YouTube channel later on. If you feel like you're missing out on these codes because you're not watching live, there is going to be a link in the description to enter our console giveaway that we do a drawing for every Friday. So if you feel like you're missing out, you still get a chance of winning something. We want you to feel included, so definitely check back. Hopefully somebody gets it. Apologies for my handwriting. Uh, Xbox codes are really long. Yeah, they're yeah. goddamn <laughs> novels. <laughs> that's so funny. All right, uh, get a room, you two. Get a room, you says, two. got it. That's a good, that's a good username. That's a really good Congra username. Congratulations. Um, so moving on, Tom. Oh, oh, I wasn't answering no. the question. What are you going to say? No, what do you got? P-Man Angel, 42. I'm thinking of buying a Switch. What games should I buy? I'm thinking about buying Mario Kart and Odyssey. Yes. Yep. Um, Mario Kart, Odyssey, Breath of the Wild. Breath of the Wild. Eh. Well, yeah. Right. Tom's one, one out of like 100 people that will tell you that. Um, you mean lose my train of thought. Breath of the Wild, Odyssey, uh, Mario Kart, Celeste, Stardew, Stardew Valley. Valley. You're good. Yeah, you should be pretty good with that. You're Any good. other things you want to add? Uh, if you haven't played, yeah, Battleship is really good Battle on there. Battleship Brigade is very good as uh, well. Hollow Knight is really good on Switch, uh, yes. as we've uh, said. What game is that? <laughs> <laughs> what games are you playing, Tom? Uh, hold up, I just want to shout out to Digital Sky, who says Breath of the Wild is overrated. I'm with Tom. Thank you. Just because uh, it's overrated doesn't make it a game that you wouldn't recommend to someone. I don't like it. Bang. Uh all right, uh, which of the hot games do you want to hear about? Do you want to hear about Elder Scrolls Online, or do yeah. you want to hear about Destiny 2, which yeah. I've been playing so on PC? I've never spoken to it. Uh, I, so I play the occasional Elder Scrolls Online. Wait, wait, I've wait, never wait. actually. What was that second game? <laughs> Destiny 2. Ah, shout out to Destiny 2. <laughs> bear, bear, bear. Um, no. Rap air horn, rap air horn, <laughs> rap air I've horn. never spoken to another human being in real life who plays it. Uh, what, what do you think? I'm just curious, like. What, are you I mean, it? I'm not. I'm not gonna marry this game, but I wouldn't kick it out of bed. Like it's all right. Like uh, I like the action-based and more active uh, battle system. It's not just like okay, I'm holding attack. That's always and kills it just me with MMOs. Going. Yeah, because I can't yeah. do that. Because I played about six years of Final Fantasy XI, and it was very much that game of just hold the attack button and mash an ability every now and then. Uh, I really like the uh, active abilities and stuff like that. I chose a, a man with like a fire whip, like a dragon something or other dragon, warrior. Like dragon you have a whip? Dragon line he has an attack that's like a fire it's whip. One of the, it's one of the cooldown attacks, right? Oh, that's yeah. cool. Yeah. I haven't gotten that far. Um, it's, it's cool. I, I like the... It feels a lot like an Elder Scrolls game, despite being an MMO, which I'm into. I thought it was going to feel more of like a regular thing. Like I saw the MMO, presentation yeah. at E3, and I'm like, ooh, I should play ESO. Yeah, that, I did the same thing, and then Steam had it for 10 bucks. Yeah, which is when I bought it. And Morrowind, and I was like, yeah, I'll fucking get it. I'll yeah, play and it they eventually. start you in Morrowind, and I love Morrowind, so I was way into being able to like walk around that again. Now, did you go into it going, oh, man, I really have been dying to play an MMO? Or were you just like, oh, this is an Elder Scrolls world I want to explore? Like, how did you uh, go a into bit this? of both. Yeah. Like, I, every few years, I get the itch to play an MMO. Yeah. Um, is it crazy? I haven't played one since... Um, Secret World and Guild Wars 2, like back when Guild Wars 2 first launched. <laughs> the last one I played was DCUO. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. But uh, combat in this is good, though. One, it's yeah. good. Right? Like, like, it's I'm legitimately crazy. good. I'm not crazy. They it's do good the thing for what like, it is for, for yeah, yeah. They have yeah. the thing, Andrew. I'm not sure if you play, it, but they have like okay, you can see when they're doing like a charge attack. So if you click both mouse buttons, yep. you can like hit them and it disrupts it. I and, did like, like you the knock them down. Area. It's neat. Uh, I wish. Like, it's not the type of game that I'm going to play all the time, but because yeah. I don't have to pay a subscription, it's something I can just pop into now and then and still enjoy. Apparently, there's a whole lot of cool Elder Scrolls lore stuff yeah. in it. Oh, it's deep. It yeah. Deep. Uh, Chessbrain94 asks, Jake seems a bit tired. Is he okay? <laughs> Maybe it's just me. He seems kind of mentally tired to me. I appreciate that. Um, He's nursing a pizza baby. I also wonder if he came in from the beginning when we were screaming about pizza. <laughs> 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 Uh, so, overall, would you recommend Elder Scrolls Online? This is the big question. Would you recommend Elder Scrolls Online to someone for 
the full buy-in price where you buy the game, then you buy Morrowind, and then you buy Somerset. Like Somerset okay, so I've boys. only played. Uh, I got ten bucks. I got the base game Morrowind. Okay. I don't have the Somerset stuff. Okay. I feel I got my money's worth from ten. I would have paid twenty bucks for this. All right, cool. Somerset's the only things. other expansion, right? Yeah. Currently, uh, Somerset's actually a little bit smaller landmass size than Morrowind. There's a lot more going on in Somerset, but I mean Morrowind, you have v- uh, Vardenfell, as I like yeah. to call it. So okay. that's sick. And I'm, I'm talking know. about a second game after this. But what were you saying? I didn't know how many expansions there were. What else are you playing? I played Captain Spirit all, all of it. Oh last yeah, night. Yes. I wanted to ask you about that. Yeah. I thought to myself, I'm like, I can't go on the show and just talk about Elder Scrolls Online and Destiny Two. So it's an hour. It's I it, I on how long to beat it said two hours. Mm-hmm. I did everything in about an hour and a half. Okay. Um, I also burned through the first like twenty five minutes because I saw a half hour E uh, three presentation of the start of that game, so I knew exactly what so to you do. Can kind yeah. of just go right. Yeah. Right there. Yeah. Um, it's cool. It's uh, very much about like being a kid and having an imagination and all of that stuff. What's that like? I know. Uh, it has a real sad dad. That also kind of sucks. I, so he is shitty. Yeah, I, here's the thing. I, the, the trailer I, was so funny. I bounced back and forth between being like, oh, man, he's just a dad who's, like, trying his best. Yeah. And then being like, oh, fuck this guy. Okay. Like, because like he seems... Players, yeah, no, like, it, it, you can tell he's... Okay, so he is trying, but he also fucking sucks. Um, but there's a lot. Like, you have, a, a, like, a quest list in this one, which you haven't had in a Life is Strange game. Like, you hit the back button... And, like, it pulls up, like, oh, here's everything. You can either go, like, fight the snow monster or assemble your, like, cape and whatnot or fight the water monster, all that stuff. And it's all, like, mundane things around his house, like how he, like, goes to restart the water heater or go to do other things. Like, it all takes place over, like, one Saturday morning, right? Yeah, it takes place over the course of, like, an hour in the morning. Um, really quick, I see a few people asking. It's out. It came out yesterday. It's free, free. and it's available on all platforms. So it, I didn't realize this exists as kind of like a demo advertisement for Life is Strange. Too. It ends, and you see some like something happen that lets you be like, okay, this is why it's a Life is Strange game. Commissioner Gordon comes up and gives you yeah. the Joker's card. And he's yeah, like, kind of. <laughs> well, I was reading a thing with, with someone from Dotnod, and they were saying that he, um, whatever this kid, what's his, what's his name? Captain Spirit. Chris. Chris. His name Chris. is Chris. He, um, he's a, was a character in Life is Strange too, and they liked him so much that they, that they wanted to give him his own thing and do something different with him. So this was just like that. It was built because, like, oh, like this character is interesting. Let's, I, let's give him a little bit more screen time than we were playing. And like, there are little tie-ins to like the games. Like it's like a thing you can totally miss, but you pick up a document and it's like from someone who worked. Like, oh, my mom went to this school in Oregon. It's like, oh, it's a Blackwell thing. Like it's little, like just to let you know it's oh, in universe. Okay, yeah, okay. that's right. But it takes three, uh, plays three years after. There are no like active connections. But by the end, I think I can see who the active protagonists of that game are going to be. Uh, is it? Don't spoil too much. I'm not. Is there? Uh, no, I'm just chats going. I'm are there, are there, there boobs? No boobs. Or like horrific violence? Uh, at any point? There might be just so like if this is a thing that you're not into. Uh, or that like bothers you. There oh, like, seem to be like references to child abuse in it. So maybe if okay. you're into that, if like you're you're not, you're into if you're that. into that, if you're not <laughs> down with that, like if that is something that bothers you, maybe skip it. But uh, yeah, no, uh, just a bunch of drunk dad. Uh, do you want? We might as well, if you want, that can go into our first story. Yeah. Uh, Life is strange. Two has been officially dated. It is September twenty sixth. That's when the first episode is coming out. And that's really all we know, for the most part. Mm-hmm. I don't follow these games too closely, personally. Uh, I'm a big fan. But, okay, so what are you... Oh, I had no idea. <laughs> no, uh, what do you want from it? What do you expect? What do you go to those games for? Like, what? Um, I go for the story. I mean, it's the same reason why, like, games like yeah, the Telltale Walking Dead resonate so much with me. And so, like, Firewatch is one of my favorite games of all time. is because I love the narrative that's, that's there. And Life is Strange, like, does that. Like, it's definitely, like, cheesy. Like, the dialogue's, like, kind of cringy. But, okay. Like, it's, it's like, part of, okay. it's part of the charm. Okay. Almost. Kind of like... No, like, shitty teen drama. Yeah. Okay. But kind of like with, with what Tom was saying with Cyberpunk, how you think the dialogue is cheesy and corny, but he said it's campy. It's more of, like, if it... It's part of the charm. If, 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 if Life is Strange, everyone wasn't saying hella and, like other shitty 15-year-old things, like, all the time, like, it would lose part of its charm. Mm. Um, So I'm hoping with this one, it's still that. And I also think 
that it's you still need to play as someone young. But like, you need to play as someone like a teen. I feel. Yeah, like I don't think you can play as an adult. I don't like I don't because that's like part of what what makes Life is Strange and Before the Storm so great. It's the game. It's a story being told from the mindset of like a sixteen year old uh, kid and or girl, whatever. Uh, and it's, that's well, like, it does the thing that Oxenfree does, right? Where it makes like oh. Teens are shitty, and it makes shitty teen writing exactly. really well. And it comes, it kind of brings you back too, because you were a shitty teen at one point. And oh yeah, I was a real piece yeah. of shit. You know I what I mean? Not. So like, it's kind of like um, part of it is like that trip down memory lane, and and the game has like that tone, like the way, like all the music that the game has in it does really uh, well. That carries kinda, over into Kevin Spirit, by the way. Yeah, I 100% expected it to. But the way the mu- the music plays, it's kind of like. A less cheesy like OC, like a show like that. <laughs> California. You know, you know, you know what I'm saying? Did they though? ever make a Jersey Shore video game? Uh, I'm sure that's like a mobile. Probably a mobile game. one. Like yeah, but uh, no, I am I am very very excited for Life is Strange. Uh, Slen 128. I mean 182. Life is Strange feels like a playable indie movie. 100 percent plays like a, like a like an early 2000s like indie movie. Like very like the, it, the, the like it reminds me of like the teenagers from uh, Final Destination or like something like that. It also reminds me of uh, what is it? Like uh, Heavy Rain, where it's like okay, this is what French Canadians think American people talk about. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I just noticed something. Uh, so the detective from Heavy Rain, Nam and Jaden. Nam and Jaden. Is basically Connor from. <laughs> yeah. It's the same guy. Yeah, it's the same what character. David Cage and being like, okay, so I'm going to make a fancy Slender Man with sunglasses and uh, fancy hair. It's like, a, it's like their character archetype. Um, all right, so Life is Strange 2. Personally, I'm with uh, P Man Angel 42. Life is Strange 2 Battle Royale. That's what I would like I'm to with, see. I'm uh, with. 100 teens drop onto an island. And I'm with user powers. Jimmy Champagne. Who's I don't that? know who that is, but he says if they put Devin Sawa in Life is Strange, I'd be there day one. Who's that? I don't know what that is. You know that? No. Is He's that a uh, reference to something? Yeah. We'll talk about it later. Uh oh. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you when you're older. I'll tell you when you're older, <laughs> son. Um, moving on, I guess, speaking of Battle Royale, um, the event pass PUBG stuff. What yes. Is the, what is the deal with this? Because this is the one story uh, I couldn't get a grip on. As first off, play the it. new map is very good. I San, say this Sandhawk? every time. Sandhawk rules. Like very I good. keep getting murdered in seconds, but it's still really good. Yeah, it makes it fun again. Um, but yeah, so the battle pass, or event pass, as I call it, is out. And it's kind of weird. So, like... I've read about this a lot, and I still don't understand it completely. Yeah, I can't, I can't, I so can't... So do you keep the stuff? Some of it? So how does this work I think to something like people who are aware of how Fortnite's passes work? It's the same exact thing. Okay. It's, 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 it's timed. You have X amount of time to finish these objectives or these missions or what have you. And then you unlock uh, cosmetics from that or XP boost from that. Um, so it's getting a lot of flack right now. A lot of the flack is like one, the stuff you get is. Uh, not- zo- sorry to interrupt. Zombie Koopa, it's not dead just because you don't play it. Yeah, it's still the top sorry. played game on Steam. <laughs> so what? sorry. Nothing. Go ahead. Oh, I lost my train of thought. Oh, sorry. Damn. You gotta. Uncle Grandpa over here. Uncle Grandpa lost his train of thought. Um. So. Hold on. Let me let me pull this up. So um. Here we go. So, um. You don't have to buy it to unlock some of the stuff. There is free stuff that you can unlock, mm-hmm. but the free stuff, if you want to unlock it, it's going to take six to eight hours a day to unlock the, just the free stuff, and that's playing the entire 30-day span, I think. Okay, that's a, uh, that seems like a bit of a big ask. Or like, yeah, because like the, yeah, yeah. the way the Battle Pass does it is like with Fortnite is there is free stuff to get, and you rank up normally, I think, and if you hit rank 60 like tier 60 mm-hmm. and then say at tier 60 you're like oh you know what like i, I want to buy the battle pass you pay for it and you unlock everything that you would have unlocked with the battle pass from yeah. tier 1 to 60 okay so like they kind of like like here How like much does it cost this is 10, 10. uh the okay. fortnite one's also 10 and it lasts about three times as long i think it's i think that lasts like three months and but a lot of people are upset because um pubg corp is putting work into the 
this event pass and work into adding new skins and work into adding new crates and they're making you buy the keys to unlock those crates but they're it seems like they're not putting as much time into like the game itself yeah I and would agree that's, with that. me too and that's where people are kind of getting upset and I get that where like Fortnite for the most part runs fine and has its shit figured out I mean there are, are weeks where like they put in the shopping carts and they had to take them out and yeah. they just came back today again yeah and then they took them out again, so they, they keep doing it. But for the most part, the game works. PUBG still has some weird shit. There's still a lot of cheaters. There's still all these problems. And instead of fixing that, they're trying to play catch up with Fortnite. Yeah. And trying to put something like this in. This is after they uh, brought a lawsuit to Epic. I, I will like say. Like citing, you know. Like, oh, and oh, now they're doing. And now they're the doing. Uh, yeah, now they're doing the same exact. I, thing. I will say that I I definitely agree with like people's frustration that the game could use some work. Uh, I had dunked on. I think it was Zombie Koopa. I kind of dunked on him, saying, "Hey, the game's not dead." But I think the game right now is in a very tricky situation where it's gotta, uh, I guess, just I don't know, for lack of a better phrase, step it up. One hundred percent. In terms of 100%. that, just because the audience, you go on there Reddit. You go on stuff like that, and people are like, "What the like?" People are knocking down the door, like, "Fix this shit." So, yeah. do it. Yeah, you know, no, like I said, it, it, it's it's weird because they're they're in a weird spot, like you said, where they need to set their game up, but they also need to fix their game. Yeah. And do you fix the game and keep the people that are playing it happy, or do you try to make it more like your competition yeah. and try to get some of them over to you? Yeah. You know, like it's. It's tricky. Like yeah. I think competition is good. Like when there's more than one battlegrounds game, but it's like it seems like they just need to do more. They need to. Yeah, no, they, they they need to figure it. They need to figure it out. I um, mean, and, and as as long as Fortnite keeps doing more and more shit, uh, PUBG Corp's gonna have to keep up with doing more and more shit. And they're I would say that they're the event pass is a is, is a baby step. And a baby step is still a step. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think it could have been implemented better. Yeah, personally, I agree. and I think there are things they should have done before doing this, like fixing their completely game. hammer out. And that's coming from someone who loves. I love PUBG. Yeah. It's not a dead game by any means. I will admit, I play much more Fortnite now than I do PUBG, but I still jump into PUBG like Traitor. every week. But well, the new map has me playing more and more because yeah. I love that map. But we we will uh, we will see. Uh, before we move forward. Quick giveaway. Giveaway time. Giveaway number two. Uh, here we are. Get your Switch out. Fastest fingers first. This is Mario Tennis. Mario Tennis Aces. Go get it. It just came out. You're welcome. Um, like I say, every time I show a code, there is a link in the description below. If you're not watching live, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, you can sign up for a free console giveaway so you're not left out of winning some free shit. Good luck, whoever gets it. Hopefully, I try to make my handwriting better on this one. And how long should I leave it up? I got it three seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay. One, two, three. Uh, Kilo Cat, as of right now, all the game giveaways are through codes. Yeah. Seems like someone got it. Someone said they got it. Okay. Two lost nuts. Yo, Andrew, what do you think of Cade dying? Um, if they were going to kill off one character to make you feel something, it would be Cade. Because, like, they could kill off Zavala, and I, like, I'd be like, that, all right, that sucks. They could kill off Ikora, and I'd be like, all right, that sucks. But Cade's, like, different because he's, like, the one you care about the most, and it's also Nathan Fillion, so killing him off makes sense if they wanted to kill off a character to make you, like, feel something. Also, they can't keep paying him. Um, I also hope... I, I'm a big fan of killing off characters and keeping them dead, so I hope he stays dead. <laughs> uh, but... He probably won't. Bungie said that he's dead, but I, I, you can't trust anyone. So who knows? He might come back. Oh, uh, he's coming back. What? He's coming back. Oh, yeah, I, I think so. Moving on. Um, the Fallout 76 mod that we were looking at earlier. Uh, this is really funny. I just want to get the right link oh, so no. I can shout out the person who made it. Uh, so this is a Fallout 4 mod. Uh, Really, the mod is like whatever. You just need to check out the video the guy made. Um, it's a Fallout 4 mod. He modded Fallout 4 to essentially try and replicate or represent the experience of Fallout 76 now that we have details on it. And it's kind of just like, like, a, like a joke. It's kind of like a cynical thing. Um, so basically, what it, if you watch the video, basically what it is is 
Uh, ah, cool. Describe it real well because the video's not working. Okay, video's not working. That's <laughs> fine. Um, basically, it's like he starts in Fallout 4 world in the Commonwealth, um, and the mod just takes out all the NPCs and adds a couple of random characters to kill that are like designed to feel like characters, like actual people playing. Yeah, uh, people. Um, they have and like they take a lot of hits. Um, they have there's weird no names. vats. Yeah, there's no vats, and um, yeah, there's no people. And then you're you're constantly like. They're, they're like little notifications coming up to like buy new loot and a random person joining your party and uh, and then nukes are randomly dropping because apparently you like you can get the codes and nuke people in the yeah. game that's like the raid or the end game um, I thought it was funny you know we like to kind of just show dumb silly stuff that people make I thought this was interesting I also just think it's like a very interesting conversation in the in the bigger picture <laughs> of Fallout 76 uh, because we are gonna link it. Uh, but uh, if you guys missed it, Bethesda also dropped the one of the gameplay bits that they showed at E3. Now you can watch it all together in a nicer, higher quality 1080p video. Yeah, a lot of what they showed was what they, they it was off. It wasn't direct feed. Yeah. On the um, the stream. It was so now them, you can get yeah. like the vault, like him in the vault, the character in the vault, and then walking through the vault, walking outside for the first time and looking around. Um, now you can see that in 1080 if you want to like if you're really into like fine tuning the details. I will say. It's pretty crazy they didn't save that experience for the game. I love that experience of like walking out. Yeah. I still think of walking out of the sewers in Oblivion. Oh man. Or the first time you get Fallout like Fallout uh, 3 is really good. Fallout 3 is good or even <coughs> like we were talking about about this last week with like uh part of what made the switch seem so like magical at first it was one breath of the wild when you unlock the bigger yeah part of the area. Oh yeah. And it is like this is on a handheld console and it also looks fucking beautiful. You like, know, I, I don't know if you watched the no clip Bethesda, the no-clip documentary on Bethesda and their games. I haven't um, watched that yet. They went. In, they talked about how that moment that they have, where like you first re- get revealed to the open world. They said that they like specifically design that every time. They're not like, okay, and then the first dungeon quest, and they come out here. They like specifically say, okay, you come out here, and the mountains are going to be like this because they want you to be able to not only be like, amazed, but also be directed in certain ways. Like you know the way in those mm-hmm. games, like. You naturally still manage to end up. Everybody still manages to naturally end up in the same town. Yes. First, uh, they 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 take a lot of time thinking about that. Ever since like Morrowind, I think really that's really. Cool. I didn't know that. I gotta watch that. I gotta watch that. Yeah, No Clip puts out really good stuff. Oh, No Clip is great. I didn't watch that. Shout one out to yet. No Clip. Uh, they did a uh, like making of the Dark Brotherhood. Uh, they put out this week. Oh, did they? It's really good. The Fallout seventy six one is good. They they there's some new information in it. Um, but on the topic of Fallout on 76, I still don't know how I feel about this game. Uh, I don't know if it's like what I'm looking for from a Fallout game uh, in terms of... I, I like I like what they showed at E3 where it was just a bunch of crazy, wacky players together doing stuff. Yeah. It felt like a mod scene game. Like It felt like some crazy mod bullshit. I appreciate that. Uh, but in terms of an actual play and how they're saying, it's like, you can play by yourself... But it's always online, and then there's not going to be really NPCs. You're going to get quests from holotapes and computer terminals and robots and stuff. And the only other players you're going to encounter out there are real online players that are other survivors. I appreciate that. I think that's ambitious. But, like, I don't know if I want to play that. I think it's very much going to be we don't know what this game actually is or how it plays or how it feels until we have it in our hands. It almost seems, too, like, like to be fair, like, it seems like they're still figuring it out, too. Like, I feel like some of those things that they're going to do, like, out the gate, they're going to tweak. Um, oh, I think this the, the, the launch day version of Fallout 76 and the three months down the line version are not going to be the same game. I, I definitely would agree with that. Tom, are you going to play this? I mean, you're going to have to play it for work. <laughs> Sorry in advance, like, for capture. Um, uh, you mean, like, how I had to play eight-hour days of Fallout 4 for work? Oh, yeah. What a hard job. It, dude, it, no, it, it is. drained me. It is. When I had to do all that arc footage... It don't make you hate the draining. game Draining. Oh, my God. Oh, I don't want to talk about I it. I had to install Fallout 4 for a video we're working on now so I could get footage. Again, like, PTSD? And I, yeah, I looked at it, and I felt sick. Wow. That's a strong yeah. reaction. Um... I, I don't like. I'm gonna obviously jump in. I'm excited to see what this is. I mean, we all bought a $200 edition of it. So is that 200 Christ. bucks? Yes, 200 was it that bucks. Much? My card wasn't charged yet. Shit. Uh, it isn't, it's Amazon, so it doesn't charge it doesn't until it ships. Until, nice. So you, you got uh, th- is that November? Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, yeah. He's October, November. So a few months, but um, I don't know. I'm very excited for this. I'm just excited. I, I like survival games a lot. 
and I also like crafting and building and shit like that. That's why I'd like I've always gone to Minecraft for that aspect, like for the survival aspect and not the like creative part of it because like I'm not good at that part. So like give me that but in Fallout and I'm fucking hyped. Like that's really cool because I, I like the Fallout universe. I love the lore and I think there's more to be done in that world than just, you know, like uh, RPGs. But Gui Frando says Bethesda will make it work like I, I, I don't worry. They always do. Yeah, and that's... I like that. Yeah. I appreciate that. Yeah. Like, I, that's how I'm going with this. Yeah. When we got the rumors that it was going to be like a Rust-like game or an Arc-like game, yeah. the first thing I was saying is like the... Uh, well, Jimmy is what really brought this idea to me is that like uh, games like Rust and Arc are just inherently shitty. Like they don't control great and that's kind of like an obstacle to get over as like a player is like how the game controls and if anyone's going to change that it's going to be Bethesda but I understand that Bethesda does have its you know its own issues and their own like jank problems and stuff like that but Mm -hmm. it's still if someone's going to clean that up and make it easily accessible and easier to play and get into it's going to be a studio like Bethesda it also seems like they they wouldn't like they're the type of studio where they wouldn't really be making this Unless they wanted to, yeah. That they want, and it seems like they they have an idea and they want to try and make it work and they want to mess with it and they want to learn. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm 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 embracing that. Yeah, that it's a, it's that, a learning experience for them for sure. But like that, yeah, they, yeah that, and they they just want to make it. Like they they sought out making this, and it shows even like we're, it's popping up right now. It shows in the world design, the creature design, like some of that creature design stuff. Even what we've shown, even what from the little we've been shown so far, I'm like that's like some of their best shit, man. Yeah, they're, they're on fire still, like. That's cool. Um, Hikio Morphe, Dishonored 2, Round Like Trash, when it came out, Bethesda aren't saints. I said that. I said that, that their games are janky. Also, Bethesda did not make Dishonored 2. They nope. published it. Arcane did. Yeah, yeah so, Bethesda's uh, the publisher. We're talking about Bethesda game studios. Yeah. Which, to be fair, uh, Fallout and Elder Scrolls games are also very glitchy. Oh, I, when, very when, Elder, glitchy. when Elder Scrolls launched, I got it. Uh, when Skyrim launched, I got it on PS3. Yeah. I couldn't play it. Yeah. Remember um, that shit? But, uh, like, in the, in the grand topic, I don't give a shit. Well, I do give a shit, but I, I'm i still thinking about the actual game. Is the game going to be not good? I think it, yeah. it's like what you said. Got to have it in our hands yeah, to see it's, what the deal cause is. Because it's different. It's, yeah. it's a different type of thing for them, you know? So it, it, it's, it's going to... We're not going to know until we have it. Uh, the, the one other thing I wanted to bring up, because like I said, it's a little bit of a slow week. Uh, Telltale has announced that they are ditching their old engine. This is the game uh, engine that they've been building a lot of their games upon. They've been tweaking Thank it. God. They've been updating it. Uh, it has gotten better and better, but it seems like a limiting engine, uh, one that does have issues. I think it's always been impressive how they've been able to get their games on every single platform. Even if they From chug a little bit. From mobile to PC. Yeah. yeah. I mean, like, it chugs sometimes. Like, goddamn. The Batman game chugged so bad on Xbox. The Batman game also didn't render in character models for and a certain played, scenes. And it would just be eyeballs, remember? I, and I played Guardians on PS4, and that was that was also kind of glitch-prone. But regardless, I, I'm, I'm into the fact that they're finally moving to a new engine. Yeah. Um, Capability-wise, I'm pumped with that. Uh, it's Unity. They're moving to Unity, mm-hmm. which, like, okay, that's fine. Um, I'm sure they're going to make their own. They're they're, they're gonna you know have it so it handles and makes what they want to do like within their constraints. Yeah. Uh, what's interesting is you had mentioned that they are trying, or, or Tom did, that they are trying something different with the new Walking Dead game. Uh, yeah. Even so though this doesn't. There's supposed to be unscripted combat. Yeah. So combat that you can necessarily fail and fail out of yeah. the story. I'm just assuming it's gonna be like shooting gallery. I feel like that's the easiest way to. What end if that. a man's jumping on you out of nowhere? Like you just walk through a house and a man jumps on you, and you have to like mash your button. But it's not like a scripted thing. Like it can just happen. <laughs> oh boy, that random. Like there could just be <laughs> random like zombos hanging around. Yeah, I get. Like, what does that provide though? That's the only. Nothing. Thing. It makes the game longer. That's all they really I want. I do see. I do see. Like when I heard that, I was like, oh, they're getting sick of what the fuck they've been doing, because they've cranked out so many of that specific style of game, and in all of those games. The action can only go down certain ways. Yep. Um, so I, I see that as I'm trying to do more. What is interesting about the new engine, though, is that this new engine is going to be for The Wolf Among Us 2. This Hell is, yeah. And, and Stranger Things. And the Stranger Things game. Those should be the first two games that are going to be running on uh, whatever the new engine is. And I wonder if that's why I got delayed. I don't know. I'm curious. Because like, you think about like the amount of games that like they, put, they push out. 
Yeah. And they, it's almost like they don't have time to... Stop and refine. Exactly. Yeah. They make a lot of deals. They make a lot of deals and they make a lot of licensed games yeah. and it's crazy. But I, I definitely think it's time for them to um, just redo their engine. Because like, for a while, I didn't care. Yeah. Cause like, I'm, I'm, like, I'm here for the story. It's, like If the game runs game. like... Yeah. If it yeah, if it drops frames or does this or does that like every once in a while like I don't care like I'm not I'm I'm not here for a smooth experience but it gets to a point with like Batman was the first one for me where I was like okay like this is getting you guys gotta fix Bat your shit like, Batman even on PC was fucked up yeah oh, really and it sucks because it's a good game yeah. the story there is great oh, man, it's and so good. they do some cool shit like they break some comic book rules and it just sucked that it was packaged into this shitty box you know what I mean like. Uh, Slen182 does say Wolf Among Us was my favorite Telltale game. I, I mean, it's the best I one. I would agree, 100%. I think we all would. I will say, not to be like a... Like, I've never played it. Not to be like a hype lord, I've never played but it. now that it's going to be like on a new engine, Wolf Among Us 2, like, that means that like when we first finally get a glimpse of that game, it's going to be like that much more exciting. Yeah. Because yeah, it's yeah. going to feel really different and new and exciting. I've never played Wolf Among Us because I've always wanted to read Fables first, and I've never read... You I never still, read Fables? No. I read the first two volumes, right. and they're very yeah. good. I want to read it. Yeah, it's really cool. Uh, read your comic books, folks. Yes. Do that. Um, yeah, Call Me Houdini says, what's your favorite Telltale game? I would say, yes, mine is Wolf Among Us. Uh, second is the first season of Batman. Uh, my my first one would be the first season of Walking Dead. Second would be the first season of Batman. What about you, Tom? Uh, uh, Wolf Among Us. Good choice. I haven't played Guardians yet because uh, Star looks like a cigarette. Yeah, he looks like he would totally like <laughs> try to hook up your like your sixteen year old. Sister. He looks like the dude who hangs out behind the uh, the uh, middle school selling weed and then tries to hook up with high school girls. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It was pretty good though. <laughs> so, uh, sketchy looking Peter Quill aside. Uh, I was surprised how decent that one was. It was actually funny. Uh, moving on, the only other thing we really got time to talk about briefly is um, accessory stuff. So it looks like Microsoft might be working with Razer to have a Xbox keyboard and mouse. Now, this had come out of a report uh, from a couple of months ago that there was a meeting uh, where Xbox was talking about possibly adding more keyboard and mouse support fully to the, an Xbox update. Um, and they also had Razer in the room with them, and Razer was demonstrating it with current-gen Razer products, not they new were, stuff. They were using the Razer turret, yeah. which so, is the, uh, the, couch the couch top, yeah. like, wireless keyboard that also has, like, a built-in, like, mouse pad for so your mouse and shit. that leads people to believe that, like, oh, okay, once this keyboard and mouse support update does finally go down, because Minecraft Bedrock update does have keyboard and mouse support. So, like, once Xbox as a whole gets that keyboard and mouse support. People are saying that the fact that Razer is in the room and already kind of working with Microsoft could lead to some sort of actual officially licensed. I could 100% see Razer being the first one to be like, here is the like the console gaming keyboard and mouse. Here's like, a keyboard that says gamer and neon lights around yeah. the side of it. Yeah, because there was talk of Chroma working with the games as well. Can I give one? And stuff like that. Oh my God, Jake, you're so needy. Hold on. There we go. This is Street Fighter 30th anniversary for PS4. Oh, look at that. Go get them. That's a good collection of uh, video game. Yeah, I'm curious to see what yeah. this actually entails. Uh, I, think, to interrupt you. I think it's worth noting that in, in that article, they also start talking about how um, like any sort of like balancing and stuff is completely on the public, not the publisher, completely on the developer to do and like take control of. But And they were like, almost like they were recommending like you really should like, do something to Minus not it. make Enjoy. it completely unfair. So maybe, like, do, like, yeah. mouse and keyboard only matchmaking and controller only matchmaking, like, stuff like that. Yeah, I think they would have to do that. Like, all right, you want to play like this? You want this control yeah. ski? Well, you got to only roll. You got to sit in the pen with all the other people playing that one. Yeah, because you got to balance it somehow. Like, ima imagine... Um, PUBG on Xbox. Like, imagine PUBG. You're, you're like, you're queuing in with people who are using a mouse and keyboard while you're using a controller. Now, how does it work with uh, like that, Fortnite? That's, it's not Fortnite. Fair. It's opt in, right? Like Fortnite, you have to say yes. Match me with PC, PC people. I, I haven't played I, on I, console I, in so long. I have no idea. Okay. I can't answer that question. I, I'm, no I believe that's the case. I just, I'm not sure. Uh, yeah. I do have one more code. Oh my God. Um. Yeah, so like right here, as part of one of the leaked images, highly suggested that usage of mouse keyboard be used as part of the matchmaking rules. 
So kind of like... Like a playlist? Yeah. So if you're going to do it, just make sure you balance your multiplayer because it will break it. It's pretty much like what they're saying. Uh, I do see a lot of people asking in the chat. I do want to point out that we might not be able to accommodate every platform every week. I see someone pointing out like they're just expecting a Steam code. We do have a Steam code, but I just want to say like we don't want to spoil you guys. Sometimes we may have two PS4 codes. Sometimes we may have one. Like, Sometimes so just, we don't have any. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When the well runs dry. No. But, you should be um, here to hang out with us, not to get free. No. Shit. I mean, <laughs> yeah, but that's why people go to the Friday show. They don't like my face. They just want a fucking Xbox. And I get it. So do I. Um, Actually, they get uh, Switches most of the time. Yeah. I've noticed most people do ask for Switches, don't they? Yep. Cool. Uh, every once in a while, it's a PS4. Um, well, I might as well drop this right now. I think this, uh, while you're doing that, this, this, yeah. this uh, mouse and keyboard thing like uh, come to Xbox is like interesting because it's like Microsoft leaning more and more towards like really just combining Windows and Xbox. Yes. Like with the Play Anywhere and how Game Pass works on both and like there's the cross save between PC and Xbox and I think it's really cool and I'm really curious to see what the Scarlet or whatever they nicknamed the new box. Hmm? Is Scarlet the, the nickname? Yes. It's the pro- uh, whatever. The, yeah, code name um, for the code next name, Xbox. Yeah. And the, with the rumor that there are multiple units not just in terms of one's 500 gigs one's 100 ter- I mean yeah. um one terabyte, but like there's multiple SKUs, multiple products, multiple boxes that fall under Scarlet. I'm curious to see what we get with that. With with this, the past few years, Xbox really trying to merge Xbox and Windows, like into like onto like like one platform. Like I'm just really curious to see what else they do to do that with the uh, new box that they're going to launch in probably the next two years. Uh, we are... Uh, Ruben Omar here for the chat. Thank you very much. Sorry Shout to interrupt. To no, uh, we are working on a video with Falcon uh, about uh, like a topic video about Xbox and how Microsoft has kind of changed its tune towards PC gaming. Uh, I mean, they have, but it's not really them changing their tune. It's really them trying to acquire that piece of the pie. Yeah, which I think is smart. I mean, um, at the I don't know if you could see it off screen, but at the Xbox conference, which all three of us were at... There were two screens, like longer, like banner-like screens, one on the left side of the stage, one on the right side of the stage. Yeah. And anytime they showed a game, it would say Xbox and Windows. Yeah. Yep. Unless it wasn't coming to Windows, then it would just say Xbox and Xbox. But I would say like nine out of ten of those, ga- like ninety percent of those games had Xbox and Windows. Uh, two lost nuts. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and Reedy One uh, says, "Talk about Near Automata on Xbox." It's on Xbox. It's out. Go play it. It's a good fucking video game. There you go. Um, Steam code coming up for you boys. This is Conan Exiles. Why? You couldn't <laughs> eat yet. Look, look, what? look at the shit come on, eating come on, grin. Come on. Hey, some people like it. Some people like it. You're like, oh yeah, come get Conan Exiles, you piece of shit. Yeah, like, yeah, that's yeah. so rude. That's not rude. Somebody out there might want to play Conan Exiles. Who? Uh, I'm sorry. There are people who enjoy it, okay? Who? All the people that play it. Go look at the go look at the player count. I don't know what it is, but people play it. Will Smith eight eight two goes gross in all caps. <laughs> Uncle, if you're Uncle one of the Lucky eighteen goes, people who really like yeah. Conan Exiles, sound off in the comments okay, below. Apparently, Someone apparently goes, someone's mm-hmm. wild. Somebody somebody got it real quick. Someone's Good. like, I'm not even gonna try. Um, okay. You ever so. think that sometimes someone would just like immediately yell, "Got it!" So people under them just stop so they have more time to get oh, to it. Oh shit! <laughs> oh man, there's like a meta game in the chat. <laughs> that's smart. That's, that's some mental games. Um, okay. All right, well, enjoy. Right. Um, otherwise, I think that's about it, guys. We what still got a couple minutes. Oh, we do? Yeah, we started late. Oh, we did start late. Yep. Um, that's really all about, uh, that's really all I have as of right now. Um, I would say for next week, look forward to a... Weird show. A weird show. Where things might break. Uh, Tom's going to be away, so we are going to be running the show, just Andrew and I here live same time same usual stuff uh we will be hitting the, the go live button and, and being here so there may be less trailer stuff running i'll be um, on a beach in the chat are you actually gonna be on a beach yeah it's like a uh, upstate new york beach yeah it's on, it's a, it's on a lake a uh, wide rocky, lake yeah. lake beaches are kind of cool yeah sometimes they're haunted though yeah. dude swimming in, i can swim in the ocean no fucking problem <laughs> don't care but lakes yeah man they're spooky i don't know what it is because they're so cold you know what yeah. I mean? And the water it, feels it different. And it's just so still and, like, quiet. And I just assume I love that it. there's a bunch of monsters. Weebs T123 says, where's Falcon? Uh, I like to try and put this out there every time. Falcon, 
is his own dude. Uh, he's a private guy. Uh, he also isn't here. He lives uh, like he, a thousand he, miles away. He likes to just do his own thing, make his own types of videos. He's not really like up on the live, talk about the newest video game stuff all the time. So we let him do what he wants to do. Um, Joey A Bunch of Nines says cooking stream. Joey A Bunch of Nines. That would be good. Uh, we know a guy. Don't look at me. I've been talking about this yeah, forever. Uh, I'm saying we know a cooking man. No, I know. And I'm yeah. saying I've been talking about that forever. Hi, are you in New York next week? Is that what you're saying? Is that, is that, am I reading that right? Um, Let me know. I feel like you would have fucking called us. Hit my line. Uh, is that what the kids say? Hit my line? Is that what, hit that's my what line. people say? Um, I guess that's about it, really. Um, I will say also... We, what, would we, what would we cook? What will we cook? We cook a lot of great things. What do you, what do you, uh, burgers, pizza, paninis, cheeseburgers, hot dogs, deep Reaper hot dogs. Na Reaper Nam wants to ask if he can uh, buy Game Ranks merch. Not yet. Uh, did Falcon saying. go to E3 with you guys? No. 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 Um, Chef Boyard, uh, no uh, Chef Falcino. <laughs> I saw a Dishonored Neo ask this uh, more than once. Do you think you'll be playing a lot of Black Ops 4 Battle Royale or the game in general? Me, I played the multiplayer, not the Battle Royale, but just a normal team deathmatch at E3. And I had a lot of fun. And I will probably play it for a few weeks, see if it hooks me, if it doesn't move on to something else. But I also play a lot of multiplayer games. So it's hard for me to squeeze another one in. But I did like what I played. I am not... Uh a fan of Black Ops 4, really. Like, I'm just like, I see that, and I'm like, nah, not for me. I'm yeah. totally finally out. Uh, but I will say, if I can, I will like, I, I would like to get my hands on just that Battle Royale mode to try it. Yeah. Because yeah. I like that they're going to try and give their own spin on it. I also like that it's just kind of like, hey, let's make a big dumb fan mode where you can play as all these different characters from the Call of Duty history. Like, I'm like, that's, yeah, that's cool. cool. That's a cute little novel thing. Uh, Savanger, Scavenger, Andrew, when will you stream Destiny 2 for us? When Bungie makes it so Destiny 2 is streamable within Streamlabs, I will stream it. Oh, and Ski June says, uh, Jake, you making a, the crew 2 before you buy? Yes. Uh, it's either going to be right on time or very late, depending <laughs> on. <laughs> I don't know if that's so funny. <laughs> it's either going to be right on time or very late. Um, I'm still uh, working out the details because that's a Friday release. Uh, I've, I'm very mixed on what I've seen, but I thought the first one had a lot of potential. I enjoyed some aspects of it just because <laughs> I like racing games a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm not a car guy, but I just like the act of racing, so we shall see. Uh, Ruben Omar says, what will be the next game you guys stream? Mm, that's a good question. That's a very good question. You're all going to get into Elder Scrolls Online. We're going to stream that together. Yeah, thrilling. Uh, I will just say some housekeeping. Like I said, we are here on Twitch, 4 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays. Uh, and then we will be uploaded to our YouTube channel later on, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Next week, like we said, it's going to be a little different, but we will be here, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, Andrew, where can they find you on the internet? At Andrew Gebbia on Twitter and Instagram. Where can they find you, Tom? Uh, at that Tom Johnson pretty much everywhere. You can find me at Jake Baldino on the things, most notably Instagram. Most notably. Instagram.com slash Jake Baldino. That's a good place to go. Um, that's about it. That's what we got for you guys this week. Uh, thank you for coming around. Also, very much enjoy those codes if you got them. Especially enjoy Conan Exiles. No, honestly, uh, the Street Fighter 30th anniversary. That was cool. I was glad we were able to give one of those away. So, uh, enjoy. Thank you guys for uh, hanging around with us. You guys got any famous last words or no? Uh, Hikiko Morphy asks, Andrew and Tom don't have YouTube channels like Jake? I do. I just never post to it. I don't. I'm Tom Johnson on YouTube. Dude, yeah, I don't. But you there, can. there's a video of me eating an orange for the first there time. It is. I like that. Video. That was pretty good. Uh, uh, I hated it. We're all on various yeah. uh, things. I know you have a new project you're cooking up. Well, you're reviving a project. I'm reviving an old project. Do you want to talk about that? You can talk about that when it's. I mean. Yeah, I have, I have a podcast about food coming out. So that's a thing. Uh, yeah, oh, you got to blast that when it's up because yeah. it's, it's good content. It's quality. <laughs> it's quality content. content. You can right. also find me and this idiot <laughs> on because video games. Ah, yes. Because video games, one word. It's a podcast. Yes. Um, look it up. It's cool. It's on yeah. iTunes. It's on Spotify. But uh, that's really it yeah. for this week. So, like we said, thank you guys so much for coming around, watching us, checking us out. Really do appreciate it. Um, I guess that's it. Do we have, like, a goodbye thing yet or no? Uh, pistachio.
That's our reference. <laughs> Come on. I want, a, I want to say goodbye. <laughs> goodbye. That's, no goodbye. one's going to understand a Master Stop of Disguise like, reference. An obscure Master yeah. of Disguise reference. Cut the feet. The Cut end, the feet. The end credits, the after credits scene in Master of Disguise, a Bush era comedy film starring Dana Carvey. He, he actually dresses up as George Bush. Exactly.